What's one of Martin Scorsese's favorite movies? If you want to know Scorsese better, you ought to watch this movie. It's the classic English movie, Black Narcissus. Let's talk about why you should watch it and what it's about, coming up next. <laughs> So Black Narcissus is a 1947 movie directed by Michael Powell, written by Emmett Pressburger. And of course, as you probably know, Powell and Pressburger are probably the greatest director-screenwriter pair ever. Pressburger's scripts are really complex, I love them a lot, and then Powell envisioned them so wonderfully, so lavishly. And here they made in the late 1940s a movie that I'm just trying to imagine some Hollywood studio executive hearing a pitch about these days. Imagine a screenwriter going to an executive and saying, hey, I've got a movie about nuns in the Himalayas. What do you think? Well, that's exactly what this movie is about. And it's really complex, really interesting, and fabulous color cinematography. The movie is about a group of four nuns who take an assignment to go to a convent high in the Himalayas. The convent's an actually old bathhouse or resort which has a lot of racy, sexually charged pictures on the wall. It's high above a valley looking down on a valley, and it's at a high altitude. We're told that before the nuns show up to this place, there were monks there, but they didn't last very long. One of the reasons is is the incessant wind that blows, as they say, seven days a week. Another is the altitude, of course, and the threat of getting altitude sickness. Third thing is that the Christian monastics are out of their league in this area. This area has its own colorful, sexually charged culture in which, well, the nuns don't seem to fit very well. Well, the nuns are going to establish a hospital and a school at this place, thanks to the local general, as they call him. Well, the nuns go to this place, and of course, they tend to go a little crazy. Helping that out is an English expat named Mr. Dean, who's helping the general. He's called the general's agent. And as an expat, he's a little bit of a wild man. He actually looks to me a little bit like Robinson Crusoe, maybe even Robin Hood. And he's the one man in the lives of these nuns that, well, gets them a little charged up. The nuns face a number of problems, and I think one of them is clearly altitude sickness. The movie hints at that. Another is that these nuns, here is the key thing about this movie, they're only in this order on a yearly basis. That is, they have not signed up to be a nun for life. They have yearly vows that they take, but they could leave the nunnery and become ordinary women again at the end of a year. Leading the nuns is Sister Clodo, played by Deborah Kerr, who we see flashbacks of her past life, and we have this question of, why did she become a nun when she was so beautiful, so striking, in love with a man back in England? Clo, don't you sometimes itch to get away? No, I don't want to go away. I want to stay here like this for the rest of my life. And so her past will be slowly revealed over the course of this movie. And of course, the question for each nun is, are they falling in love with the wild but handsome Mr. Dean? He gets drunk, and yet he shows up at their convent a lot, one, to sort of harass them, but also in times to help them. And of course, he provokes them by saying, you know, you will not last through the rainy season. You will not last five months at this place. It's too grueling for you. Well, I find that this movie and this script has a number of simple contrasts, and you know, just to have two or three contrasts would make this a very simple movie, but there's a whole set of these contrasts, a whole batch of them, that when you put them together in a script in a movie like this, makes this really interesting. One thing, there's an obvious contrast of the high and the low. This convent is set on top, or almost on top, of a mountain at an old palace, and down below is a valley. Several times over the course of this movie, you get shots showing you both the high and the low. Now, the high and the low is connected to, of course, the nuns' inner lives, their spiritual existence, their existence as heavenly or spiritual creatures versus the earthly or secular creatures below. And of course, who lives below? Mr. Dean and the poor people. Down in that valley, it's a jungle, it's wild, it's green, it's lavish. Up above, it's airy, it's light, and it's windy. So of course, see the dichotomy here, the spiritual above, the earthly below. Of course, with Mr. Dean versus the nuns, there's a male versus female dichotomy. And another contrast is clearly the English civilization versus this Indian, North Indian, Himalayan civilization. And yet, with that, another contrast is the Christianity of the nuns versus the Hinduism or whatever exactly it is, Eastern religion 
of the native peoples in this movie. And that goes along with the palace that these nuns are trying to convert into a convent. It is at once a palace, a resort, a bathhouse, sexually charged with all kinds of interesting pictures on the wall that Mr. Dean wants to point at and provoke the nuns with. And yet the nuns, of course, are sexually pure. That means they don't have sex. They're holy unto their God. They're married to Jesus Christ. So a lot of the tension in this movie is, will the nuns stay nuns? Will they leave the nunnery? Will they be able to keep the convent in this palace? Will they not. Another one of these conflicts is that above the palace or the convent is a holy man who sits above all day doing nothing, saying nothing, and he's visited by a number of people. He is literally above the nuns, and that may be a sign that, you know, the nuns cannot establish Christianity in this region as it has not really been established before by prior monks or other kinds of Christian missionaries. And of course, there's another big contrast in this movie, which is the untamed, as I said, sex sexually charged desires of ordinary people, of people everywhere, not just men, but women in this movie, versus the need to control oneself and control one's desires. Now you put all these contrasts together into a script and you've got this nice stew of conflicts and tensions for each of the characters. As I said, Michael Powell, the director's envisioning of this script is just remarkable. This is a movie that's absolutely beautiful and gorgeous to look at. You must get the HD version, the Blu-ray version of this to watch. So it's one of the rare movies, in fact, that uses matte paintings in the background and it doesn't look dated. In fact, the paintings go right along as backgrounds with the storyline, the dreaminess, the airy quality of the palace, the convent above everything on the mountain. This movie as a PAL movie is just simply stunning to look at. The edits are stunning, the montages. I love Michael Powell's montages. You know, this movie is made right after World War II. Questions about will the British Empire contract? Will it change? What are its holdings in India like? This movie is definitely talking about whether the British, the English can stay in India or not, whether they fit there. Do you like it, Sister Ruth? It's called Black Narcissus. Comes from the Army Navy stores in London. Black Narcissus. I don't like scent at all. Oh, Sister. Don't you think it's rather common to smell of ourselves? This movie is also stretching things a bit, trying to show women as sexual creatures, including nuns who try to control themselves, obviously with their costumes symbolizing that, but as well, they've vowed to do so. However, they can give up, as I said, their vows pretty quickly. They don't have to live them over the course of their lives. And these nuns have lived lives before they became nuns that are not unlike Mr. Dean, the ordinary people they serve. They remember those lives. And actually, this palace turned convent sort of reinvigorates their memories and gets them to remember what they were like. And so many of them, probably two or three of them, get the hots for Mr. Dean. To me, this is one of Pal and Pressburger's three or four greatest movies. And although I know this is a 1940s movie, about nuns, I think all of you will actually kind of like this movie. You'll at least appreciate the cinematography and the quality of the directing here. I had the same problem. That's exactly what I thought. This is a movie about nuns. I'm not going to like it. Well, actually, I really was taken in by it. So that, of course, is why Scorsese loves this movie and loves Pal and Pressburger. And if you're a budding artist, if you're interested in art or movie making or just great work period, you probably will like Black Narcissus. Have you seen this movie? What do you think about it? Let us know in the comments and please subscribe to this channel for more great content.